Hi, I'm Henry Sagerman. This is the holonomy maze puzzle. So we have this green piece that's trapped in this purple sphere, and of course the goal is to get it out. Here's a copy of the piece. It's got two arms, and on the bottom it has four legs. And this way the feet look like the battlements on top of a castle, so let's call the piece a rook, as in chess. Another reason to call it a rook is that it moves around its board in straight lines that meet at 90 degrees. Sometimes the rook's arms block a motion, and you can't rotate the rook directly to get its arms out of the way because its feet stop it from turning. However, you can go around a triangle and come back rotated. Here I can't get back into the start position at all because one of the rook's arms gets blocked at the back. This effect of coming back rotated is called holonomy. This happens any time you go around a loop on a curved surface, in this case the sphere. Just to show how you win at the end, here it is back in the start position but with the correct rotation, and the rook just comes out like this. So it's a maze where the rotation of the rook is part of the maze. There are six positions the rook could be in, and four possible rotations for the rook in each position, so it's a maze with 24 nodes. How hard could it be? Well, it isn't a very difficult puzzle, but it is confusing. You can't see the whole maze at once. Let me show you a way to see all of it at once, which was also integral to how I designed it. It involves this sculpture designed by Heim Goodman Strauss. Each node of the sculpture corresponds to a possible position and rotation for the rook. Let me tell you how it works. First of all, a position with a rotation is really an orientation of the rook in three-dimensional space. The position tells you which way the top of the rook points away from the center of the sphere, and the rotation nails down which way the arms are pointing. There's some useful terminology for thinking about orientations in three-dimensional space that comes from aviation. If you're in an airplane, there are three different kinds of rotation you can do. You can yaw to the left or to the right, you can pitch up or down, and you can roll to the left or to the right. What this is telling us is that the space of orientations is three-dimensional. So let's build a picture of what that space is with the maze sitting inside of it. Our picture starts with a ball of radius pi. First of all, let's choose some orientation to correspond to the center of our ball, say this one. Now let's suppose that as we move along the x-axis, we rotate the rook around that x-axis, with the angle we rotate being the distance that we travel. Here we've rotated by pi on 2, halfway out to the boundary of the ball, and our rook has moved along an edge of the maze. If we keep going another pi on 2, we reach the boundary of the ball. If we go in the other direction along the x-axis, we rotate in the other direction as well. Notice that rotating around the x-axis by pi is the same thing as rotating by negative pi, so we should really think of gluing the two ends of this line together to make a circle. We can do the same thing with the rotations around the other axes. Here are all of the rotations around the y and z axes. Uh, here again, rotating by pi is the same as rotating by negative pi, so we need to glue opposite boundary points of the ball together. To fill in the other nodes of the maze, there are also some rotations by 2 pi on 3, and finally some more rotations by pi. So these are all of the possible orientations of the rook on the sphere. We can also draw how the rook can move. Let's get rid of the z-axis, because moving along it corresponds to rotating the rook in place, which isn't allowed. We can move along the x and y axes, and now let's add in all of the other moves that we can make. As an example, this is the triangle we went around at the very start. Shown here in the ball of radius pi, it's very clear that you haven't got back to the same place after going around the triangle. This then is the graph of all possible paths in the maze, and this is Hyam's sculpture. Remember that opposite points on the boundary ball are the same. So, for example, this edge out here is really the same as this one over here. The ball construction doesn't just work for these special orientations that the rook can get to, it works for all possible orientations of an object in three-dimensional space. That is, the space of orientations is topologically the same as taking a ball and gluing together opposite points on its boundary. In topology, this space is usually called real projective space, which is written RP3. To make an interesting maze, we have to block some of the possible paths with pegs added onto the sphere. Each peg blocks two of the edges in the graph, because each arm of the rook is blocked by a peg in exactly one possible orientation of the rook as it goes past. So how did I choose where to put the pegs? Well, first I figured out the geometry that would let the rook out only when it's in the correct orientation, and would provide a home location to start solving from. That means that the home and exit positions are here in the graph. I then used a computer program to search through all possible choices of where the pegs would go. Actually, I made more than one maze, here's a second. 
Both of these have relatively long paths from the home position to the exit, as well as a few loops that are good for getting lost in. Strangely enough, these two mazes feel very different. It's hard to say exactly why, but the kinds of movement you can do feel quite distinct. The pink one has uh, more loops and fewer dead ends. For example, I can do the zigzag path that goes all the way around and joins up with itself. This illustrates a cool property of holonomy on the sphere, which comes from the gauss bonnet theorem. The amount that you get rotated by holonomy as you go around a loop is the same as the area of the part of the sphere contained inside of the loop, assuming that the sphere is radius 1. The area of half of the sphere is 2 pi, which has the same effect as not rotating at all. So this means that you come back to the same orientation as you started, going around the zigzag loop, and so you can go and do the loop again. If you want to get hold of one or both of these mazes, they're available from my Shapeways shop, link in the description. It ended up costing about as much to get two rooks as it would to just get one, so the rooks come in pairs. Also note that they take just a little bit of working in to move smoothly around their mazes. Alright then, these are holonomy maze puzzles. Thanks for watching.